practice and thrash out some practical points for our audience. And I'm told that there are about 300 students and faculty members and practitioners listening to our webinar. So let's see if again, we can give them some practical tips as to manage a CML on a day-to-day -day basis. So can I share my screen, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So let me introduce my panelists to you. Uh, Dr. Lalit Mohan Sharma is a very dear friend of mine from Jaipur. Uh, we do lots of conferences and lots of projects together. Uh, Lalit is senior consultant, uh, medical and pediatric oncologist at the uh, Bhagwan Mahavir Cancer Hospital in Jaipur. We have Dr. Sandeep Shah from uh, uh, Ahmedabad. Uh, Sandeep has figured in a lot of CML studies. He has several publications on CML to his credit. He is presently senior hemato-oncologist, medical oncologist at Sterling Cancer Hospital in Ahmedabad. We have Dr. Shekhar Particle, uh, senior medical oncologist at HCG Cancer Center in Bangalore. Dr. Samir Tulpude from uh, Bombay, uh, senior consultant and clinical hematologist at uh, a very well-known Kokula Band, Dhirubhai Ambani Hospital in Bombay, in Mumbai. Uh, I think Dr. Somia from Calcutta will join us subsequently. Uh, uh, Dr. Rahul Bhargav, my dear friend from Delhi. Uh, he's director and head of hemato, hematology and hemato-oncology and he's a stem cell transplant expert par excellence. Uh, he presently works at uh, the Fortis Research Institute in Gurgaon. Dr. Shirish Alukar. Alukar is a very dear friend of mine. Uh, some 30 odd years back, we trained uh, in medical oncology in Tata Hospital together. And I have some very, very fond memories of Shirish and myself on the 10th floor of Tata Hospital where we used to stay. He is senior consultant at the Apollo uh, CBCC Hospital at Ahmedabad. And uh, last but not the least, uh, Dr. Sada Shibdu, additional professor and head of the Department of Medical Oncology at the prestigious Nidam Institute of Medical Sciences in Hyderabad. And there are the maximum number of CML publications from our country are from Dr. Sada's institute. So, uh, so I hope my panelists will uh, Permit to my gray hair and my age uh, to address them by their first name. And let's quickly start the panel discussion. So our first case is a 31-year-old uh, uh, MD in pediatrics. Uh, he's senior resident in pediatrics. This is an actual case. Came in April of 2016 with high-grade fever. He had, a, uh, he had a CBC done which showed high counts and, you know, a small spleen. BCR able of 81%, uh, low focal risk of diagnosis. Uh, we counseled him from a, for a second generation PKI, but he opted for imatinib. Uh, so he was started on imatinib. He had an excellent and optimal hematological and molecular response. He's presently on 400 milligrams of imatinib. Absolutely no side effects other than the fact that he's become several shades uh, fairer and he's had a deep molecular response. So this is his molecular response chart. Uh, I don't have a BCR after this, but you can see that in just about a year and a half's time, he had a deep molecular response. Now, uh, fortunately, this young man got selected in the Rajasthan Public Service Commission uh, to be assistant professor in pediatrics. Uh, as is uh, customary, uh, all uh, people joining government service have to go through this medical board. And now uh, uh, you are the convener of this medical board. And my question to you is, would you recommend to the government as convener of the medical board that this young man is fit and approved for government service or that he has chronic myeloid leukemia, which can come back at any time. And uh, he, he is not fit to join government service because this is a high risk situation. And uh, you know, your neck is on the line because if you approve this gentleman and that he is disease free and he has a relapse, then you are going to be in serious trouble and there might be an inquiry instituted against you. 
So let me ask this question to uh, Dr. Rahul Bhargav. Rahul, what would you do in a situation like this? You are the chief of the medical board. Would you okay this man? This yes, sir. Man? Yeah, go ahead. So, sure. so we will uh, clear the person saying patient is fit because the whole thing is at this present moment of time, he is he's in CMLCP with a deep molecular response. Though the response is 0. 0.0197, still not into MR 4.5, nearing towards MR 4. But the whole idea is his chances of uh, achieving an MR 4.5 and thereby his chances of getting converted <laughs> into uh, AP or BC is practically zero. So I would not bother about it and I will say he's fit. Very good. Uh, uh, Dr. Sada, you work in a government hospital and this might be a usual, maybe not a usual situation, but this situation can arise for you on Monday morning. What would you do? Sada, can you just speak a little loud? Uh, your yeah. audio is not very clear. Yes, sir. Hello? Is it okay, sir? Yeah. yeah. Speak as loud as you as, yeah. as loud as, as you. Dr. Bhargava said I think it's right, sir. I think this person is fit to any government job. Because this is this is under control. Nowadays I think the longevity of the CML patient is as normal as normal person. Okay. So if he has something good monitoring, so there is no doubt in that. Only thing is what you said is something like any the cost of the treatment in the future. Most of the government people they say something is uh, cost of treatment is borne by the government. I think like any diabetes and hypertension now, I think all these disorders are like a chronic disorders. So we can't just uh, make make him unfit for the job. So definitely, we can do the fitness and we can mention that then we can live longer. At the future, you know, we can go for three or four studies up there. I think we can convince any government official based on this. So I am saying fit. Very good. So if this actually situation happened with me, of course, I will not share the identity of the gentleman, but I also did what both my panelists are saying. I declared this patient fit. I'm very happy to tell you that he got selected and is now a faculty in one of our medical college hospitals. Any one of my panel have any comment on this? Anybody? One quick comment, then we can move on to the next case, or maybe a little bit of theory on this and then the next case. So, Dr. Heyman, the, the only yeah. thing Dinesh and everybody has spoken, the role of TFR and so and so forth. But my opinion of choosing a medication is uh, of a second line TKIA is our ability to prevent even one person going into blast crisis. The data is very clear. People who achieve uh, MMR still has got Raul, nine. Raul, pardon me for interrupting. We have a case which will discuss that. Huh? Maybe I will take your opinion that time. So, yes, you know, there have been at least two publications, uh, one from the JNCI and one the JCO, in which it is very clear that the survival of patients, whether they are uh, males or females, whether they are uh, whatever age group they are, 55 years, 65 years, is now close to the survival of the people in the general population who are not patients. So I think uh, with expert management, we have been able to do this, which has been a huge advance in the treatment of chronic myeloid leukemia. And the mortality now is driven by the comorbidities which the patient has and not by the chronic myeloid leukemia. So let's come to case number two. We have a 38-year-old farmer, four-month history, large spleen, high counts, high platelets, few blasts, raised basophils, raised eosinophils, uh, and the standard CML marrow, Philadelphia chromosome positive, BCR able positive. So final diagnosis of uh, CML chronic phase, high SOCAL risk, and intermediate ELTS risk. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to emphasize to you that uh, in addition to the SOCAL, uh, we should now also get into the habit of at diagnosis, uh, calculating the ELTS score because in the, in the TKI era, this is the score which gives you the maximum survival information. So now my question first to Dr. Sandeep Shah is that in addition to usual hydration, nalopidinol, hydroxyurea, what treatment would you start on this patient? Imatinib uh, standard dose, imatinib high dose, resatinib standard dose, low dose, nilotinib, prosotinib. 
Sandeep. I think this question was diagnosed in 2014 or 16. So Sorry, Sandeep, can, time, you, can you speak up? You're a little loud. This, pa this patient was diagnosed in 2014 or 16, I think. Yeah. So that time, Jandik Dasateni was not available. So probably I will start him with immediately 400 milligram standard dose and see the early molecular response at three months. And then I will decide for the treatment. Okay, so Lalit, uh, you understood the case. Uh, how would you approach this patient today? Suppose this patient comes to you today now. Yes. Uh, how would you approach this patient? Uh, sir, uh, I'll be having preference for the second generation TKI and preferably Dasatinib in modern era uh, because the uh, patient has got high so called score. So we need to uh, hit hard. And second thing, we need to be having a target of achieving TFR, at least a possibility in our mind. So okay. I'll be going for. And, and uh, your choice of drug in the, in the, with the second generation TKI is all the agents. Uh, all the at least the three agents, uh, uh, desatinib, nilotinib, and bosutinib are available to you. Yes. Uh, what would you choose? Uh, desatinib, in, uh, because of the convenience. Otherwise, we have used more of nilotinib because of the, the various uh, support programs by the. You know. So, so Lalit would choose desatinib because it's an MQ program and they have a generic uh, desatinib. Is that right, Lalit? I think that's not right, sir. It's convenience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I completely understand that. That was a below yes. question. Yes. Uh, Kekar, would you agree with Lalit or do you have a different opinion? Shekhar, are you there? Can somebody unmute Shekhar, please? Dr. Shekhar Patil, are you there? Kalpesh, is Dr. Shekhar online? Yes, sir. He's online. Uh, is he unmuted? Shekhar, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Can you speak up, please? We can. We can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hello. Are yeah. Hearing yeah. 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 We can hear you, but please speak a little loudly. Uh, yeah. Basically, I, I agree. The, uh, the, today, because of the availability of the uh, generic desatinib, I would consider that one because with imatinib with 400 or 600, the chances of achieving uh, 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 deep molecular responses or long-term remissions with high SOCAL score or less. So I would uh, definitely consider desatinib today with availability in the generic form. Do so, you have a different opinion uh, like you yeah. work in a, in a hospital <laughs> where all rich patients, there are no economic considerations, Samir? Uh, sir, uh, given the hospital's name, I think it's a misconception that everybody can afford treatment here. So I think so to sort of begin to so to begin with, I would agree with what uh, the general the panelist is saying that he's a young uh, young person, uh, high SOCAL score, uh, and as Dr. Bhargava as well said, that the aim should be to prevent going into a blast crisis. Uh, so I think I would prefer a second generation here. Now between desatinib and nilotinib. Uh, having looked at, used both of them, uh, you know, the incidence of, uh, you know, plural effusions and things, at least when I've used are slightly higher, uh, you know, requiring chopping, changing of medications. So if someone can afford both, uh, you know, nilotinib is what, the signal is what I would probably go for uh, because I haven't uh, changed them too much. Okay. And I think Rahul wants to say something uh, towards this. Yeah, Rahul, very quick comment, please. So, Dr. Samir, I completely agree with desatin, with nilotinib. That is also troublesome. It is not also Agreed. such an easy drug. You Agreed. need to Agreed. develop diabetes. So, young patients have developed diabetes. Yeah, yeah. A QTC prolongation and the... So, Rahul, your audience. On nilotinib, also yeah. one of our patient has developed heart failure. So I think CT is often. So can you hear me now? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You have a. You have a. Yes, certainly, there's a bit of echoing, uh, and then you go off. I think that's what's happening. Yeah. So okay, can Rahul, you, your point is well taken. All the drugs have some toxicity, yeah. and we need to yeah. look at that, as Colonel Kutalkar said. 
and uh, this i think it's just uh, the inconvenience of a twice a day tablet with nilotin it that's all and yeah. and taking yeah. it on an empty stomach sometimes it can be an issue with some people right mm -hmm. so this is like the five year desatinib data you can see that five years uh, uh, both with respect to uh, uh, mmr and mr 4.5 desatinib is significantly better similar with 10 year nilotinib uh, the 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 major molecular response rates are significantly better and this is with uh, the before trial bosutinib again exactly the same findings higher mmr rates higher mmr 4.5 rates and higher mmr 4 rates and this again i think a slide was shown to you uh, earlier uh, you can see uh, uh, nilotinib and desatinib the significant gain in complete cytogenetic responses major molecular responses uh, major molecular responses at 5 years deep molecular responses at 5 years both with uh, nilotinib and desatinib but no difference in overall survival and uh, so so you have a choice of drugs and i think the choice which drug which uh, imatinib or which second generation tki you start will also depend on how fit your patient is and what comorbidities the patient has even in the first line not only in the second line but now, can just yeah. I, go ahead can you take the voting of the panel is if price of the dasatinib and nilotinib is same what is their first choice dasatinib or nilotinib sandeep dasatinib sandeep will do it when we meet face to face this is difficult to do a polling on on a group so dr sandeep shah the answer is simple dasatinib vocal for local <laughs> so that is a very big price are same of nilotinib and dasatinib is still dasatinib sir once a day tablet is easier yeah yeah okay the both of them have advantages and disadvantages so shirish this question is going to go up you have to answer this question so please see the case carefully we have a 28 years old female one child uh, and and is desirous of born children like standard high risk cml final diagnosis cml cp high social risk now here is the question she was started on desatinib as per recommendations of rahul had a quick hematological response and a good optimal molecular response with minimal toxicity 6 months from today she had a almost a major molecular response she is on 8 weekly follow up and now when she comes to you uh, yesterday she tells you that her pregnancy urine strip is positive and her last menstrual period was 6 weeks back so she has been exposed to a second generation tki for about 4 or 6 weeks into the first trimester of pregnancy now shirish what would be your advice for this patient uh, uh, should she continue pregnancy and also continue the tki should she continue pregnancy stop the tki Uh, would you advise her a medical termination of pregnancy and after that is done continue the set name or would you choose something other than these three options chirish yeah thanks himant actually our surprise where you got my photograph from i didn't know this <laughs> photo existed at all <laughs> so you can you can either fight or thank the organizers for that <laughs> okay here in okay. namdabad only you can beat them up okay now. yeah it's sure. okay firstly i'd like to say i don't Need much of uh, with CML mainly into solid too much, mm -hmm. but yes, in this case I would ask the patient to I mean, if she is not so much for when I mean, she wants to continue pregnancy, right? But if yeah, she has she, a, she if she has one issues, one child. she has one child, but she desires with one more child. Mm -hmm. I would still counsel her that you better stop. Uh, I mean, stop that certain if, or if she wants to continue pregnancy, just to stop that certain if. There's no other option then. Or the best option would be to. Do a termination of pregnancy and continue as a patient. The disease is a priority. Okay. So, so fair yeah. enough. Your option of choice would be option three. You would advise a medical termination mm. of pregnancy, and once you are done with that, then mm. you start with the treatment, right? Right. So I have Somia online also. So Dr. Somia is a, a consultant, senior consultant uh, uh, hematologist at uh, Apollo Hospital in uh, Kolkata. Dr. Somia, what would you do? What What of the what of the four options you see on your screen would you advise for this patient <clears throat> thanks dr malhotra 
basically there has been case reports where pregnancy has successfully continued in spite of a patient being on TKI inhibitor. For example, there has been case reports of successful con <coughs> conclusion of pregnancy on patients with imatinib. Now, the issue is here the child has been exposed early in the first trimester and the lady is desirous of having another baby. I think that probably medical termination of pregnancy is too harsh uh, course to follow. I will definitely discontinue dasatinib and I will probably opt for some other option which won't be that harmful for the baby. For example, if interferon, alpha interferon is available, I will probably prescribe alpha interferon. Let the pregnancy continue, deliver the baby, and once the baby has been successfully delivered, then probably uh, return to desatinib. That would be my option. Okay, so anyone of, uh, let me ask Dr. Lalit. Lalit, what would you do? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, my option will be uh, number three, sir, MTP, which I will advise and then discuss with the patient. But my advice will be to go for MTP and then continue the satinib. And to, for subsequent pregnancy, we will ask her to do it in a planned way so that we can plan to stop the TKI before pregnancy. Okay. So, so Shekhar, you work in a, a very fancy a private hospital in Bangalore where you have lots and lots of bitch, very aware, very literate patients who do not hesitate to take you to court in a minute. What would you advise? Definitely, I would advise for MTP and I will con continue the deciding because here the risk of some amount of congenital anomalies are higher in the in the first trimester if she is exposed already six weeks are over. So I would definitely not uh, take a risk of Continuing the presentation. Shikha, can you speak up? We can barely hear you. A little louder, please, or a mic closer to you. Continue with the. I would uh, stop the desert in it. Shikha, so Shikha, we can't hear you. Can you speak up, please? I know you're a very soft spoken gentleman, but we have to hear you. Can you hear, sir, now? We can barely hear you. I think some problem is the mic connecting there. The, yeah. I, I am very, very close to the thing, sir. Now it is much better. I don't know what happened. Uh, it is much better. Uh, yeah. I, 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 will, I will advise for an MTP and continue the decide. And if I don't want to take any risk of uh, having a congenital anomaly in the child uh, under whatever, except because he, he is a, she can have one more child later on and uh, she is on decide. And if after two, three years, we can stop and go for... Uh, one more conception, we can respect her views, but not with this continuing this particular pregnancy, I don't advise her. Okay, so any other opinion? Very, very briefly, because we'll do a fourth case and then we'll go to the question answers. Anybody yeah. has an opinion? Yeah, I think they have something. So, we have something got on in Martin first trimester, most of them they have used. Shada, thoda sa jor se boya. we can, I mean, we want everyone to hear you. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, one thing is, uh, with the imaginative, we have a clear cut data, even the first trimester with 400 mg, none of them develop any complications. We presented data in ASCO. And the desert lab also, they have some data, but think still the patient, we have to explain pros and cons, cons of this continuation of pregnancy. If nowadays we have the good uh, imaging the modalities, we can find out the congenital anomalies. So once we have to explain, Pro some time we can continue the pregnancy and first stop the desatinib. But we, we should be very clear in that. We have to explain in detail. Then only we can take the decision. The decision should be taken by the patient, not the doctor. Okay, so I'll tell you my opinion what I would do in a situation like this. You know, the chances of an adverse fetal effect in normal pregnancies, uh, pregnancies which are not exposed to any teratogenic drug, is 1 to 2%. And with TKIs, I agree with Sada that the most of the data is with imatinib, but also with second generation TKIs, this adverse fetal malformation incidence goes to 10 to 15%. The majority of these adverse fetal outcomes are uh, stillbirths. So if there is a stillbirth, of course, it's a major psychological trauma to the patient and the family, uh, but the remaining five to 10% of fetal abnormalities, which the patient and the family has to live for their whole life. 
and of course this decision is the patient's decision and the family's decision and there is a 80 to 90 percent chance that you can have a normal fetus also but the unequivocal recommendation from our side should be an mtp and if the and if the patient chooses not to have an mtp that should be very very clearly documented in your case file so agar khuda na khasta there is a fetal malformation then at least you are legally safe and and i think uh, what lalita said is absolutely appropriate in this patient we would uh, uh, try and discontinue this pregnancy and not discontinue the tki for very long and then subsequently after one or two or three years then you know use the use the tfr principles which hari told us and then do a planned pregnancy okay so i'll go to the last case quickly why is my slide not moving okay so this is a 48 year old banker uh, the only thing different in this patient from our usual patients is that he had chronic renal failure his urea is 98 his creatinine is 3.2 and the creatinine clearance is 28 and the ultrasound shows a bilateral contracted kidney his loss of cortical or medullary uh, dis uh, medullary dysfunction a distinction as suggestive of chronic renal disease so you have a final diagnosis of cml cp high focal rays with crf and a creatinine clearance of 28 ml per minute now let me start with rahul rahul uh, how would you treat this patient which tki would you give would you give standard dose would you give reduced dose which tki you would not give rahul so if you if we have a renal dysfunction is it audible yeah we can hear you go ahead please so if there is a renal dysfunction then the dose of imatinib has to be reduced okay and what about so, the second generation tkis so again in a second generation tki not much of a interaction with the renal dysfunction it is only with imatinib which has to be done i am not sure about busatinib but for desatinib and nilotinib for sure we can give the full dose anybody has any other opinion on this i had a patient a few uh weeks back like this and i could not from the from from my existing knowledge decide what to do with that patient so i looked at the product information of all the four drugs i show you that in the subsequent slide does any one of my panel has an input on this samir uh, what would you do samir are you there hello samir sandeep you are the cml expert what would you do dr sandeep shah on safer side i will start with dasadenib 50 mg because now 50 mg data is also available and to be on safer side with in chronic uh, renal failure patients i will start with dasadenib 50 mg okay so so in the interest of time i will uh, go ahead so so this is the Two. this is the, the product information uh, uh, material which i am showing you imatinib is not excreted by the kidneys patient with mild to moderate renal dysfunction can be given low dose imatinib low dose meaning 400 mg but with utmost caution and close observation patients who have severe renal dysfunction creatinine clearance of less than 20 uh, or who are on hemodialysis should not be given imatinib now nilotinib and desatinib uh, clinical studies have not been performed in patients with impaired renal function and clinical trials with these two agents uh, excluded patients who had a serum creatinine of more than 1.5 times the upper limit of normal and even though the metabolites of these agents are not majorly excreted through the kidney we do not have data on using these agents uh, in patients with renal failure so my take over here is that this is what the patient also gets to read and if there is a worsening of the renal failure with one of these agents even with reduced dose uh, at the moment it is difficult to recommend them so my suggestion would be that you go with uh, 400 mg of imatinib and monitor it very carefully now contrary contrarily for busutinib the product information says that patients who have moderate renal failure can be given 300 mg of busutinib of course with careful monitoring and even patients with severe renal failure creatinine clearance of less than 20 they can be started on 20 mg bosutinib 
with careful monitoring. So this is just some information for you to digest. Uh, imatinib, mild and moderate renal failure, 400 milligrams per day with caution. Severe renal failure do not use. Bosotinib can be given in mild renal failure, 400 milligrams. In moderate, 300 milligrams. And in severe, 200 milligrams. There is no data for nilotinib and desertinib. So if you use any one of these agents, then uh, you know you are on a bit of a legal limb as to if there is an adverse outcome, then it might be difficult for you to defend yourself. So any comments now from my panelists regarding uh, TKI and renal failure? Any inputs? Yeah. Okay, so this is, the, this is my last slide. Uh, like as already mentioned, uh, RCML patients now have a normal life expectancy. And this holds true only if expert management is provided to these patients. And it is our job, all of you who are leaders and experts in CML treatment, in hematology, in medical oncology, to make sure that you impart this knowledge and much more than this knowledge to everybody who's treating CML. If somebody is not treating CML, I think it is criminal negligence. And we have to convey to our young people to some of the physicians who are treating uh, CML that you have to have a basic knowledge before you can do justice. And uh, several options are now available in our country with the availability of generic, not so expensive second generation TKIs like the setnib. A TFR is a reality, but it's a reality in a minority of patients, maybe 20 to 30% of patients. And the choice of TKI, not only in the second line, but also in the newly diagnosed patients will depend on the cost, the convenience, as Rahul mentioned, the comorbidities which the patient has, and the toxicity. So with that, I'll finish my presentation. I will stop the slide share, and we will see if we can do some question, okay? So is everybody around? We'll do some questions. So if the first question is from Dr. Mati Sudhan, uh, who wants to know uh, TFR, uh, and I think we've already talked about TFR, but he also wants to know which is the most effective drug in the accelerated phase of CML. So Pankaj, are you there? Dr. Pankaj? Okay, Pankaj is not there. Uh, Dinesh, I can see. Dinesh, can you answer this? Uh, which is the most effective drug in accelerated phase of CML and what dose also? I think the accelerated phase will come into the high risk. So we should go for a second generation TKIs considering the toxicity and the other criteria is met. So probably the second generation TKIs rather than uh, matinib. And we should closely monitor for the response. And, and a higher, higher dose than the standard dose, right? Probably the Sir, higher dose. Yeah, Rahul, go ahead. Sir, but nilotinib is not approved for accelerated phase and a blast phase. Only desatinib is approved, sir. So, so desatinib, 140 milligram. Right. I, I agree with Rahul. So well, we have a question from Dr. Ruchika. How helpful is early molecular response assessment in predicting overall survival? So who wants to take this? Uh, Sandeep? Dr. Sandeep, can you take this? Sandeep Shah? Yeah, in, I think most of the trials it is shown that if patients achieve early molecular response, that is less than 10% at three months, then chances of survival, overall survival will be high. And, uh, as, uh, chances of uh, getting deep molecular response also will be high. Okay, so let me it's ask very, uh, very Samir. Uh, Samir, uh, uh, do you suppose you started a patient on imatinib? Yeah. And there is suboptimal response at three months. Say the yeah. BCR able is 15.55. Uh, it is not 10, not less yeah. than 10. Yeah. Would you change at three months or would you give that patient a little more time on imatinib? Yeah, I tend to give them a little bit more time. Uh, a little bit more time meaning a month or uh, you do the BCR able again at six months? I tend to do it at six months. I don't uh, do it straight away after a month, but uh, we take the patient into confidence and get what the patient's views are. Uh, and if they're agreeable, I usually tend to do it again at six months and see what it is. Okay. Dr. Swamia, what would you do? Raul, I'm coming to you in a second. One minute. Dr. Swamia? Yeah, I won't be changing my options just at three months 
I will wait till the six months report. Okay. And depending oh, okay. on what the report is, I will decide. Rahul, quick, Rahul, quick, crisp comment. Just when when it comes to overall survival, none of the trials, neither decision, neither earnest trial has shown any benefit of a second generation DKI in progression free opponent. The only thing which they have been able to show by early molecular response is our ability to stop. Your ability to reach to MR 4.5 at the earliest. That is the only thing which we need to remember. What is your criteria and what your treatment philosophy that will decide. Okay. Okay. Agreed. So I have a question from Dr. Narendra Agarwal, which I will direct to Dr. Lalit Mohan Sharma. Uh, what is your choice of TKI in a newly diagnosed patient uh, of accelerated phase of chronic myeloid leukemia? This has been covered a little bit, but you can you know do it again one more time, Lalit. Lalit, are you there? So he has left. He left. Okay, so maybe uh, maybe uh, Dr. Sada, Sada Shivdu, are you there? For only dissect lips, so there's only one drug to approve. It's a more efficacious drug, so definitely go for dissect lips. Okay, so last question, maybe Rahul, you can take this. Any role of NGS for somatic mutation detection in patients of CML who do not have an optimal response uh, in current real life practice in our country? Sir, no, sir. We have started doing it. We have started sending samples, looking out for any other mutations which are there. I don't know what to do with that. But yes, if you are doing uh, IRMA by an NGS, that will be a good idea. But looking for a somatic mutation is the area of interest which we are pursuing. Let's see. Okay. So I think uh, we've covered most of the questions also. If there are any, any comments by any one of the speakers or any one of the panelists, brief uh, five, 10 second comments, we'll take those and then we will kind of try and wind up. Any, any comments from anybody? The only comment is that you conduct, you keep on conducting every week or every 15 days such debate, sir. It, will, it is so good to hear you and the panelists, sir. It is so much learning. Thank you so much, Rahul. I thought it was, uh, you know, when 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 uh, Rajesh and the other people came and said one more one more webinar on CML, I was a little reluctant. But um, it's always a little bit of knowledge gain for me, so it's fun for me. And thank you very much for those nice words. So we have a score of three, not three attendees in our uh, meeting. I don't know what kind of woman that is. So three not three people attended this, uh, and I hope they gained a significant amount of knowledge for this most common leukemia in our country. And when they when they see patients from the coming week, coming Monday, they will be a little wiser uh, with a with a, with, a, with their approach to the patient, what investigations to do, how to approach, what first line treatments to give, which patient to think of for treatment free remission, and particularly. Uh, think of, uh, anticipate, and manage toxicities. With that, my most, most sincere thanks to Ancure for facilitating this, for, uh, for Rajesh Kalpesh and his team at Mice Ideas for, for organizing this, and for my faculty for wonderful, wonderful talks, and for all the delegates who, who spent their uh, Friday, Friday evening with us, and I hope they learned something. I'd like to hand over proceeding uh, for the final conclusion to Mr. Sanjeev Kathuria. And Sanjeev, can you be very brief and wind up? My apologies for, uh, for, for uh, you know, uh, uh, overstepping about 30 minutes into extra time. Sanjeev? Hi. Thanks a lot, sir. And on behalf of MCURE, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to all the honorary faculties as well as the delegates. As rightly said by you, sir, almost 320 delegates have logged in for this webinar and making it a very interactive and informative session. Thanks a lot once again. And now over to you, Zoe. You can give the vote of thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Vidhi. I would like to thank Hemant uh, Maluta, uh, sir. Uh, for such a uh, nice scientific and academic speech. would like to thank the entire panelist 
who we had such a great interaction with and, and as an mqr uh, we would have uh, we would continue to have more such uh, events uh, more, more both especially in the field of hematology and other and i would also like to inform that you know uh, with the promise we would uh, have an event tomorrow as well uh, especially uh, on the role of sidofovir so stay tuned uh, we can connect you can get in touch with the, the local people and my side as team is always there so thank you my side as team as well and uh, again sir thanks a lot dr himat mulata so uh, for making it such a successful event so thank you so thank you my speakers and thank you my faculty we'll see you soon thank you good night enjoy the weekend good night